Howdy, it's Tubal Cain again, and this video is devoted to the discussion of the Greenfield Tap and Die Company's wonderful straight handled tap wrenches. And what prompted me to do this video is my recent purchase of this number seven at a garage sale for five bucks. And as I cleaned it up, I got to thinking about the way it's built and the quality. And this has been covered by several other people here on YouTube. And the Greenfield Tap and Die. Uh, wrenches appear to be the most uh, coveted and uh, enjoyed tap wrenches of all. So that's why I wanted to cover them. They are uh, handy, they come in different sizes, they're, they're beautiful looking, and they have that wonderful, or the older ones anyway, had that wonderful color case hardened look to them. So let's get started on this. There are some pictures, but they all are not necessarily Greenfields, nor are all of the items on this page. And don't you dare think that you can still buy them at this price. But starting here with the 00 and up to the 24, I believe, or at least the 22, are the Greenfield wrenches. And it tells you the numbers of them and the... Uh, size tap that you can use in them. That's probably not of too much interest to most of you, but there you go. As far as I can tell, they still make these, but uh, the lineup is quite, not quite as extensive and they change the numbering system. But here too you can see what taps uh, that they will hold, what the overall length is, and what the, uh, the wrench number is. And I believe that the only one that retained its number is uh, the seven that is 19 inches long or perhaps the uh, the uh, zero is also the same number but the other numbers have changed and I know that Greenfield has been bought out by another company I think Vermont but you can look that up the number six wrench if you buy it is seventy five dollars now but this is the one that I just bought and take a look at that nice, well, I'm not sure how well it's going to show up. The color case hardening, it might show up better on some of the other sizes. And the newer wrenches are not going to have the color case hardening. They're just going to be a, a black parkerized type of finish. Also, it's interesting to notice that on this one, and I had to buy the whole screw plate in order to get this. It was an old wooden box, but I, I left it lay for the next customer because it was incomplete and it had those uh, carbon steel dies, which I'm not interested in. But this one is apparently misstamped. It's off, it's rotated a little bit, and it goes as far as telling the number, but the number itself is missing, and it says here, made in but the USA is not showing. So that was misstamped 75 years ago, but it is a number seven. You might find it interesting that also in my collection here I have two number sevens, but the bottom one, and I bought that at an auction of, I forgot what I paid, but uh, well I'm, I'm going to turn the name over so you can't see my, well my buddy's name was on both sides, but he used to build ultralight planes. But this one is rebranded as a Cleveland. Can you see the C on it? But I believe it to be made by Greenfield because it's, it's just identical. But it's much more modern and like, like I said, it's black. And this one has had very little use or abuse because it was owned by one man. This is my number six, and you might find it interesting to note that this other one here, made by Butterfield, and they made taps and dies and were quite an excellent company, but it's similar in size, but it's marked uh, number 22. The profile is somewhat different, but rather elegant, but note the difference, uh, different approach that they took in the way the jaws are made. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes if you stay with me now. When I bought this number seven last week and there was some rust on it so I cleaned it up but uh, I took it apart 
Now I've never had one of these apart before and they use a compound thread in here I think you'll find interesting if you've never seen it before but I'm going to take the number six apart right now because then I'm going to take the number uh, 22 Butterfield apart and let me see let me double check the number on this Butterfield I take it back it's a number 10 Butterfield that is the same size but I'm also going to take it apart to show you the compound threads on that that are done in a similar fashion but not identical. They each have their own take on uh, the way they put the threads in there. But by using the compound thread you can easily move the jaw in and out. And I'm going to ex try to explain that, but that, uh, that thread in there. I don't know how good of a job I'm going to do. But I'm going to start by taking this apart right now. And it's a bit like a Chinese puzzle. And you must remove this little screw first. All right, I've backed off this set screw quite a ways and it has a, a point on the end of it. It's not the regular cup type. Then we can knock this jaw out. And I'll have to use a brass punch in order to do that. So I'm, I'm going to drive it out off camera with this. I have to support it properly because it's really a good fit. Out came the hardened jaw. And there's the little pointed set screw that holds it in place. And what an excellent fit that they had for that. Now in order to get uh, the other jaw out, I'm just going to screw it as far as I can. And you can see that you have to have that other jaw out in order to do that. Then the movable jaw with its left hand thread is exposed, back the handle out, and out it comes. And then this handle also can be screwed all the way out. Now the other one can be screwed out as well. I don't intend to do that because it'll serve no purpose for this demonstration. And now that's a right hand thread. Now I've already in rehearsal I might add. Check these threads out for sizes and I've got it written down here for the uh, Greenfield number six. The left hand thread is a 5 16 20. The right hand thread is a 17 30 seconds 20. Now those are pretty oddball size. Those aren't off the shelf. You wonder where they would have got taps and dies. Oh, that's right! Their main concern at Greenfield Tap and Die was the manufacturer of taps and dies. So they just sent down to the first floor a work order and out came those threads. If you do the math, you'll very quickly see that the, uh, the lead of a 20 pitch screw is 50 thousandths and both of those threads are uh, 50 thousandth lead, they're, they're 20 threads per inch. And I'll get to that in a minute, uh, why I'm telling you that. What seems like irrelevant information. I'm calling this compound thread system. I don't know if that's correct. Perhaps it's duplex or, or there might be other names. Now I have seen threads like, and it's not a double thread. I have seen uh, threads something like this used in other devices, but I can't remember where. If anybody else can, can, uh, can tell me where you've seen this type of system, uh, let me know. But by using this system, first of all, the left hand thread allows you to turn the handle in a right hand position and advance this to tighten it. You don't want it the opposite or it would, uh, well, the same is true on a lathe compound. We, we want to rotate it clockwise to move the tool away from us. Otherwise it's counterintuitive. That's the word I was trying to think of. Also when you use two threads, 
you can uh, double the movement. So as I said a moment ago, we got 50 thousandths lead on this and 50 thousandths lead on the other one. So when we combine the two, one rotation of this will turn, will move the jaw 100 thousandths. I will prove that to you later on when I reassemble it. Now I'm going to take apart the Butterfield same size and compare the moving parts and the, the threads to the green field. Some of you will find that interesting. Others may conclude this video right now. Now I'm going to take the Butterfield number 10 apart and for those of you that have never heard of Butterfield taps and dies, they were a major player years ago in this field, but I guess they're long gone. Now notice there's no set screw here, and this is color case hardened as well. A rather elegant tool. This is a left hand thread, so the first thing I got to do, and I've already loosened it. Am I going the right way here? Wrong way, Corrigan. Out comes this handle. That's a left hand thread. Lay that off to the side, and that held this uh, fixed jaw into place, and now I can tap this out. But I, yeah, that will come right out. And you can see that there's the left hand internal thread. Where did they get all these strange taps and dies? Oh, that's right, they also made taps and dies. Now I'll take this end off, and to do that. Again, I'm going to screw it all the way out as far as I can. There's that jaw. And both of the threads, and this is a real unusual and beautiful arrangement, but we got a left hand and a right hand thread on the end of this handle. Quite different than the way that Greenfield did it. We got a fine and a coarse. I also took the liberty of determining the thread sizes on the uh, the Butterfield, which I just showed you. That left hand thread is a 7 16 18. That has a lead of 55 thousandths. The larger thread is a 1 half 24. And neither one of those are standard. And that has a lead of 42 thousandths. Now you add those two together and we have a combined lead of 97 thousand. Wow! That's mighty close to the 100 thousandths that uh, Greenfield uh, used. So essentially it's it's the same lead. And I'll talk more about that in a second. So on the Butterfield, one rotation of this uh, threaded handle will close the draw. What did I say? 97 thousandths, almost 100 thousandths. So we have a rapid movement. Now wh why didn't they just use one thread? Well, first of all, they wanted that left-hand thread, uh, as I told you a moment ago, and we didn't necessarily want this handle to get too much shorter on us. In other words, it would end up almost a half inch shorter uh, for as far as the leverage that you would need uh, to turn it. Now, maybe that's not a big deal, but if we wanted a lead of uh, 100 thousandths, we would have to use 10 threads per inch. Well, that's what 10 threads per inch looks like on a three-quarter. You couldn't possibly use that on a smaller diameter or the depth of the thread would be so great that uh, you wouldn't have much shaft left. I think you guys know something about threads can, can understand that and I'd like you thread engineers in the comments to shed some more light on what I've talked about here because I'm sure that you know a lot more about that than I. Now I'm going to put these two tap wrenches back together and uh, show you the movement again and uh, just a few closing comments. I hope that some of you are enjoying this. I'm enjoying doing it. 
Okay, here's how to put the Butterfield back together. I put that way in. That's a good. Oh, that's a good fit. Might have to come in from the other way. Yeah. Probably some burrs on there too. Now the, the left hand thread allows me to intuitively back up the movable jaw as such. Now I can put the fixed jaw in place. The other handle with the left hand thread feel. That's a little tight. I'll do that off camera. This is a 3 seconds bit which is 93 thousandths, a little, little bit less than what the travel will be here when I rotate the handle exactly one turn. I'm trying to show you that this jaw will advance the amount of the leads that I showed you. So there's the drill bit and it's just a little wider because it would be several thousandths wider than the 93. So that's how far that jaw moved. Using that compound thread effectively gave us the advance of this big three-quarter ten. Savvy? And now I will reassemble the green field and for best results use a little 3-in-1 oil on the threads. And there's a little bit of a buggering up here by someone hammering on that over the years. So put that in there like that. It's a bit like a Chinese puzzle. Bring that all the way up and then slide this back in. Now I'll back it out and they move together. And then I can put the fixed jaw into place. I'll tap it in with a brass hammer. That's a real tight fit. And put the set screw in. Got it in place. Need to jam it up. So I will use the force of the screw to do that. It's in place and now I can tighten the set screw. Now if you make sure that you've got that little uh, set screw hole in the right position. Of course the screw won't go in all the way if you got it in backwards. This should take the mystery out of it so some of you that need to take these apart and clean them or restore them or whatever will uh, be able to do that. And let's do the same demonstration with the green field. I'm going to rotate the handle one full turn. And this is a 764 which is a hundred and nine thousandths. Doesn't quite go in because it's moved one hundred thousandths. Maybe like I should have got feeler gauges out. and it's ready to go to work. This is a number four and needless to say the thread diameters are going to be different sizes on these smaller ones. But let me show you one other thing here. This is my number five Greenfield Tap and Die. It's been around a while. It's lost all its color. It's got somebody's initials on it. But 
Here is also a number five Greenfield tap and die. So this must be far older. Notice the color case hardening on here. Must be far older because it is not the same pattern even though it's the same company but still is elegant and beautiful. I suspect that uh, this machining out here to give you the radius here and here on both sides was rather expensive to do and maybe maybe it was cheaper to make these I don't know they would have had a reason either that or they were standardizing at that time but that's the color case hardening that uh, all these machinists covet and that's no longer done in, in industry I hope you enjoyed the little dissertation here on Greenfield Tap and Die, everyone's favorite tap wrench. And the uh, Butterfield as well. I have one more thing to show you and I will conclude this rather lengthy video. This is the Butterfield. It has the slanted jaws. Notice how it holds a 3 quarter 10 tap. Fully catching it on the flats. Now compared to a green field also with a uh, three quarter, this one's catching it fully on two adjacent sides with the movable jaw pushing against it. Which one is held the more firmly? That's the question of the day. And it will probably take some engineers to explain that to me and to you, but I do find that there are engineers watching this and I get some uh, some good information from them because I do not really have an engineering background but I know a little bit about it from people that I have talked to. Anyway that concludes this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Keep watching and I'll see you in the next video.